bitch. Sit and spit and rhymes with Barbell Shrug here at Norco Costa, California. Love. Rocking the mic with Doug, Mike, and Chris. Prove these guys from Memphis, San Jose is legit. What? <laughs>
Sweet. Yeah, CTP, I remember that. That's your the, job. The first year I was doing CrossFit, there was one of the things that got posted on the website, which was like 400 meters lunges. Oh, we did that too. That yeah, was one of our first workouts. Yeah, it was probably. Oh, I think that was like the, the summer of 2007 the that got posted. I remember I was like. No problem. Exactly. Went to the track. I was like, I'm going to do exactly 400 meters. I'm going to go to the track, make it happen. I 100 meters in, I was like, my legs are getting shaky. I was like, this is not going to be cool. Did you do it? Did you do the whole thing? Yeah, I did the whole thing. Yeah, it must have been the same time because we started in 2007 also. Yeah. And that was one of the workouts in our first month. And it wrecked us. It how took long us that take? so long. I don't even remember what how long. Fucking hours it was hours I did it, it recently. 20 minutes. At least. Yeah, it must I've, take me 20 minutes. I, I did it this last year. I don't remember how long it took me. Do you we have won't that, talk about mm-hmm. that. Do you have that moment when you start at the fin- the starting line, and on the other side of the, of the track, shit gets really, re- and you realize it's a long way back to that finish line. Oh, oh yeah. Fuck. Well, oh, I think yeah. the first year of CrossFit was that way. It's like it's like oh that workout doesn't look bad. And you're then so halfway through, you're like oh ignorant. what did I do? You have no yeah. idea. You have no idea. Yeah. So you did the 2008 games, I and I'm did. actually really jealous because I remember in 2008 I was uh, I was still a student at University of Memphis uh, in the exercise science department. And we were, it was the same weekend as the NSCA like national conference. That sounds boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> national strength and conditioning association. Like you go and just listen to scientists oh, no, like talk kidding. about the research they've done on like physiology and whatnot. So and it's we, a lot of people who haven't been on a, under the barbell for a long time. Oh, we, no, yeah. They just want to talk about it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually spent, uh, we actually had a blast because it was in Vegas. Oh, we nice. had a great time, okay. but it was one of those things where it was it was like the same week, and I was like, well, you know, I'll just go to 2009 games, no big deal, you know. <laughs> and then 2009 and one, came boom. and they had regionals, and I got my my ass handed to me at a 2009 regional. That was your chance. 2008 was your chance. 2008 was my chance, and then not, you know, <laughs> a, after that, I was just like very very oh, dis- how, how disappointed. How quickly your I dream died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I wonder, is like, if I would have gone to 2008 you games, you probably would have won. I probably would have won, and then, <laughs> and then I would have be been right motivated now. to train hard, you know, around the clock, and I would probably, you know, one of the best crossfitters in the yeah, world. I mean, Jason, you, would Jason well, I mean you would be Jason. We'd be interviewing you. Yeah, that's exactly what would have happened. <laughs> it's it's very, very there unfortunate. Ab showing with uh, with Rich. <laughs> And Matt, and Matt. I, I actually am. I actually am disappointed. Because I swear to God, that picture must be photoshopped. Like, you, oh, I've seen you guys. You don't look that so ridiculous. manly. I guess you're pretty they manly. They do look pretty. I think they do. Who's but, manly? No, that picture with the, with the abs. There's there's yeah. like inch deep rivets I mean, it's in there. Black and white. That's a little shady, deep, maybe. Deep slices, bro. <laughs> Your gold, Jim's colleagues would be very jealous of his oh, abs. Oh, totally. Her. As they sit in the back, go look at these assholes kicking their pull ups. <laughs> cheaters, <laughs> all cheaters. Do you feel like? Do you feel like? Uh, so, so back home, people still kind of like turn their head because we're from Memphis, Tennessee. I think we hit like twelve gyms in like a twenty mile radius this year, so not very many. Um, and, but we still get people kind of turn their heads when they see us do things. We're the weirdos. Are you are you guys weirdos here, or is it kind of like is, is CrossFit kind of normal in Northern California? Um, I think I mean Northern California is where CrossFit started, right? So, I think most people know what it is. I definitely get looked at weird. A lot of the places that I go. Do you One think the, that has anything to do with CrossFit? Uh, I think it has <laughs> something to do with... Uh, the shorts? The, yeah, maybe. They're getting atten- <laughs> no, no, get attention. Yeah, they definitely... The shorts and the tank top... Um, one of the favorite things of some of the guys on the seminar staff with me is to go to the airport and they require me to wear a tank top at the airport and they're like please like just walk around just talk on your phone whatever because they just like watch watching people look at you know and with they're confused or i don't know what they're looking whatever but uh yeah and as soon as they ask you what they do or a lot of times now people come up to me and they say hey do you do crossfit so they assume that i do it based on how i look which is cool i like that that's cool yeah yeah, I think if you see a, a certain physique, which is a very nice physique, and you see uh, neon, this lots is of neon, <laughs> lots of short things, and you go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, CrossFitters. Yeah, I, I definitely look at people's shoes, and I look at their hands and their forearms, and you can tell pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. So this is going to post some probably weeks from now. Oh, boy. Unfortunately. Not, not sooner. But uh, you guys just released a rap video today. It, just, it just dropped. Like That's the terminology you, you use. Just dro- it, rap albums drop and singles drop. Okay. Yeah, my single just dropped tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been we we recorded it a long time ago, and it's been really hard. I've had it on my computer this whole time, and only a handful of people have seen it. Mm. And the uh, you recorded the game, so it's yeah. been two months. I, I wouldn't say that's. 
a too, really long time. That's probably a long time, time for you to we, wait. We were yeah. planning on playing it at the games, but it was too stressful and blah, blah, blah. So right. they were like, we got to wait a couple months before it comes out on ESPN, <laughs> and then we'll show it. And we've just been sitting Is on it. Is that going to be on to ESPN? You think? No, not our music video, but just to hype it up again for people to get excited. <laughs> okay, so I have this question now. Is CrossFit just a stepping stone for you to your hip hop career? I mean, and if so, what's your what's your MC <laughs> title? I do have a rap name. Um, it was given to me recently uh, by some of the crew from the Progenics team, and it's Nine Lives. Nine Lives. Huh? Oh, okay. How many do you have left? After I the think I accident? might only have like six. Oh snap! <laughs> no, but uh, so yeah, it was given to me after the car accident and when people started finding MC out Nine that Lives. I liked to I like rap. That. Yeah, that's car accident. Dope. That's yeah, news to me. What's the story? You didn't around? know that I was in a she car accident. Her, you, you didn't know her, but she broke her neck, dude. Come no, on. you don't follow <laughs> her don't that bitch. closely, <laughs> son of a bitch. Honestly, why else would you even want to talk to me? Miranda, no. I knew. I studied it. Okay, these guys aren't like me. <laughs> Doug, you don't know either. Doug hasn't said anything this, this whole I know. time. I've, I've been Doug's quiet literally over here. been standing here <laughs> with saying nothing. This is the first time Chris Moore's come in more prepared for an interview than me. Usually, I wing it, but I know I, I know she's got mad MC skills. Right. Which I can I can appreciate because I've been known to I'm not gonna do it on camera CTP but I, I like a little karaoke <laughs> rap I'll pull up a, a like a little ice cube or something and get after it. Who does it? I mean, if you don't, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll sing a lot. I like to sing more than rap. So tell me about this car accident. Uh, in two weeks before the 2012 games, um, I was in a car accident and I broke my hand. Uh, was taken to the hospital. It was a pretty bad car accident. I, the guy that hit me was going 40 miles an hour. And so I was taken in an ambulance to the hospital. I was at a level one seminar, actually, was at lunch. Mm. Offered mm. to go get coffee for all the other trainers. That's and what, what happened? Nice. I know. Don't be nice. I know. And of course, so the coffee never came back. I never came back. And um, went to the hospital was super messed up like couldn't move on my own couldn't sit up go, lay down just in a ton of pain and um i could give you want the long version or the short version long all right all the uh, uh, how sure. long is the long version no usually I, I have a tendency to like glaze over some important parts so <laughs> in a lot of pain that my hand was broken too i had fractured uh, like a boxer's fracture uh and I said, I think my hand's broken and my neck hurts a lot. And they were like, okay, this doctor was an idiot. I'm not going to name any names. But anyways, he looks <laughs> at my hand and he was like, oh, yeah, I think you just popped a blood vessel. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> What? This is a car accident. No. Asshole. Is that no, the first yeah. thing you I'm think I'm pretty sure of? it's broken because I had x-rays? broken the key off in the ignition. Um, <laughs> when they t came and told me to turn the car off, I couldn't because it was broken off. Oh, so I'm wow. like, pretty sure my hand's huh. broken. And I'm like, my neck really hurts. And he's like, okay, well, we'll go x-ray your hand. Never x-rayed my neck. What? Wow. That's insane. So, my this, experience with the ER dude, is that they scan <laughs> everything. Uh, this, is, right? this is already sounding like some lawsuit shit. I would not be happy. If I was your husband, like, these motherfuckers are going down. <laughs> yeah. That would not be cool by me. So, I mean, I came in in the neck brace. The guys in the ambulance did a good job, but they don't work for the hospital. They just drop you off, right? So... Um, never x-rayed my neck left there and I'm psychotic and I'm a crossfitter they told me I had whiplash so I'm like ah oh, whatever whiplash like I can work out and sure. do things I literally um, I couldn't brush my teeth it hurts so bad I had to sleep sitting up for like two <sighs> weeks but I was Damn. I was so stubborn and I wanted to work at the game so I downplayed it to everyone I was like no 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 I'm totally Holy fine fuck. I'm totally fine so I worked <sighs> at the games and interviewed the athletes and stuff full broken neck the whole time whoa and um holy shit Right before we left to go to the games, I went to the doctor, my hand doctor, to get a hard cast put on my hand. And the hand doctor was like, did they actually your neck? Because he could tell I was moving really bad. Mm. And I was like, oh, no, they told me I had whiplash. And he's like, that's pretty weird. Like, I'm going to x-ray your neck. This guy was an orthopedic yeah. surgeon. So mm -hmm. he x-rayed my neck. Didn't hear the results. Left, go to games. He's calling me off the hook. Calling, calling. I'm not going to answer my phone if I don't know who you are during the middle of the games. Like, I'm oh, busy, right? Fuck. Yeah. This is, this is yeah. stressing me out. I'm not even your neck. <laughs> we get back, and I'm literally here uh, with Garrett and Jason, and I'm like, what can I do? I still couldn't bend over the waist because my neck hurts so bad. So I'm like, how can I do something heavy without <laughs> bending over? Like, oh, just cra this whiplash is really and lingering. your body is screaming right now. <laughs> All the warning signs. Stop what you're doing. <laughs> Jesus. This whiplash is really lingering on, you know? So I was about to load oh up God. the yoke, and... And oh do my God. <laughs> yeah. It's like the worst thing you could probably do. I know, just put it on there. And I got a phone call actually from my husband, and he was like, Answer your freaking phone. Like, the doctor's office has been calling you off the hook. Um, 
And so I'm like, oh, whatever. Like I was being such a smart ass to my husband. Lesson I'm learned, like, oh, I'm sure. Whatever. Like, am I dead? Is this heaven? <laughs> what I Some said. sixth sense shit. He's like, this is not funny. Like they've called me like five times. And so I'm like, all right. So I call this guy back. He's like, you need to go to the emergency room right now. Your neck is broken in two places. Whoa. Literally, if you trip and fall, if you sneeze, if you get rear-ended, you will be paralyzed from the Holy neck fuck. down. What, and do you know what level? That was a good scare were? tactic he used My C2. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, my C2 vertebrae was like, so normally it's a ring like this, right? And it was like that. Oh. And just chilling for two weeks. You lucked so, out. I know. Well, they Shut told me Jesus. that if, A, if I wasn't so strong, that the break would have paralyzed me immediately. Wow. And then B, if God I damn. wasn't so strong and had so much trap meat, I guess, and neck muscle, <laughs> trap meat. that I trap definitely meat. would have become paralyzed at some point during two weeks. I mean, I don't know how many people I hugged at the CrossFit Games that year and just, right. like, just so much stuff. So right. and they're all taller and you see their, their arms going, like, right around your neck. Oh, my gosh. Like, and they're, they're you. all, yeah. of, of, of course, they were all, like, hammered and excited right. and it right. hurts so bad every Dude, time. How how bad would you feel if you were that guy that came around and, and I just squeezed <laughs> your neck and you just fucking like I <laughs> killed Miranda. Yeah, well, right. that would be she the just collapses. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, get up, Miranda. Never <laughs> oh, she's such a jokester. Are you gonna rap now too? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's not breathing. Oh, Jesus. Well, you did say earlier that you practiced rapping in your car. Oh yeah. Were you rapping and not paying attention when you got um, hit? Um, I definitely. I've. I'm. I mean, let's be honest. I've talked on my phone in the car. I've texted. I was not at that point in time. No. Um, I was just. Just coming back to the level one seminar. I, I mean, we drive around in cities that we're not used to and stuff yeah. like that a lot of times. It was it down in LA okay. um, that it happened. Jason was there. Um, he had to assist me getting home the next day. Was this a T-bone? Right. You get hit on the side? Yeah, so I was turning oh. left and the car so got, was going straight. Yeah, you got that, that lateral whip. I don't know why it was messed up. But I, so I went to the hospital that night and they, they had to fuse my vertebrae together. Um, and this was in... Oh, and man. July 18th, 17th, 18th of 2012. That's intense. So they did a full open, uh, you know, fracture reduction and instead and, and fused. Yeah. And then they went through the front. So I have a scar on the front of my yeah. neck. Um, it's pretty small. You can't really see it, oh, which yeah. is probably oh. why Mike had no idea. Just literally no idea that I broke my neck. <laughs> I, I knew I, I was just playing around. Shit. Yeah, no. um, I was kind of hoping you would have a big, gnarly, like awesome scar right down the back of your spine. We well, hoping. I got a tattoo back there to commemorate. <laughs> to, but um, show it, show it. See if you get on the. Sweet. It says uh, "Live, Fate Loves the Fearless," and I got that after my surgery. But um, That's yeah, so story. I, they fused it together, went through the front, and. I, it was like six months before I was able to really work out hard again. Shit. So yeah, what was your basic approach for rehab from that? Because that's not a. It was it relatively straightforward? Is it got tougher than you expected? Was it easy to recover from? Um, I mean, it was easier. Like, I think because of CrossFit, because I a CrossFitter, like I just wanted to know what I could do right away. Um, but I couldn't go overhead for probably like six months maybe not that long yeah. um nothing explosive so no box jumps no cleans no kipping pull-ups no kipping anything no obviously handstand push-ups no kettlebell swings no mm. everything had to be slow mm. um and honestly like the day i got out of the hospital i went and rode the airdyne bike i wasn't allowed, i wasn't um allowed to use my hands because of the twisting so i just had yeah. to sit upright i did a lot of that's when i did the 400 meters of walking lunges again because it's like oh, what right, are you gonna yeah. do well, that's a good point like you get you get an injury like this what do you do i pulled you, the sled yeah you can't like you can't make your body do something it's just not prepared to do you don't want to do nothing so you just mm -hmm. you do what you can and it's fine what's well, a good example for people that like sprain their ankle and they're like well i hurt my ankle i can't, I, I can't come in and train <laughs> oh, today fuck. i'm like we well, got two arms and core and your other, your other leg you can do a thousand things <laughs> my, my husband will give me a hard time because i'm so like intolerant of people's little injuries like that as you I'm should be like, <laughs> like, bitch. really yeah <laughs> my that, neck oh, was broken that's what you should do, what you should do. You go, Somebody's gonna like, yeah, I got, I got this thing going on, my ankle, job, oh, yeah, career. I'm really stressed out. Oh yeah, did you break your fucking neck? <laughs> Shut up. I do it all the time. I'm like, oh yeah, that's at the level one seminars. People be like, what if I have tendonitis in my elbow? I'm like, yeah, I worked Stop out a the bitch. day I got out of the hospital from breaking my neck. You can figure it out. It's oh, a pretty good fucking comeback. <laughs> yeah, it's me. So I think I heard you say this one time. Correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the worst workouts you ever did was a was like a 400 meter run, a 500 meter row back to back, just oh, one my gosh, round. And I've done it twice. Yeah. yeah. At a competition. So you did it again voluntarily. 
Yeah, so, well, the second time was at a competition. Oh, the so first no. time I did it voluntarily because I had heard about it at a competition that I wanted to do and I mm. couldn't because I was at a seminar. And then I did the same competition. I think it was the next year and they repeated it, so I had to do it again. And it was awful. But they added a sandbag for the last, like, 50 meters of the sprint hmm. the second time, which didn't help. No. Sandbags are So, uh, <laughs> you were saying that's one of the worst workouts that you've ever done? Like... Uh, until I moved here. Yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, yeah? What, 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 what topped it? Uh, what kind of crazy <laughs> shit does Jason have you do here? Yeah. Uh, we've done some pretty bad. One of the worst ones that I remember, I don't think Garrett was here, but definitely me, Jason, and Barbara did it together. It was an every minute on the minute, which typically people associate those with being easier. Not when Jason's programming it, because he programs it in a way that, like, if you finish in a minute, it's a victory. <laughs> so it was 20 minutes, and I'm not even joking. He wanted to do it with 115, which would have made my weight 75 or 85 pounds. And we were like, no, no. It was um, 10 thrusters, 20 double unders every minute for 20 minutes. Oh, and I was like, no. Jason. How many thrusters? <laughs> I just like you can do ten. that. Exactly. It's that's just 10 nice minutes ten. of craziness. I was like, thrusters. Jason, that's not possible. Like, it's a bad idea. He's like, okay, okay, let's just try it and see what happens. <laughs> And we get going. I Sick think we scientist. did the first minute. He's like, okay, let's drop it down to eight thrusters. So we dropped it down to eight thrusters in 20. Me and Barbara, like, missed an entire round somewhere in there. We were looking at each other with, like, please, like, help Glazed me. What eyes. am I going to do? And Jason's just, yeah, that, that definitely was one of the worst um, workouts I've ever I guess it's one way done. to prescribe mm -hmm. things. Like, okay, let's start with something we know will kill everybody. And let's <laughs> not dial it back till someone survives. And that's our prescription. <laughs> if it doesn't seem possible, it's probably a great idea in the mind of Jason Kalipa. I was talking to Jason the other day. I asked him, since he had a big uh, lifting background before he started CrossFit, it sounds like you kind of had the same thing being a personal trainer before he started CrossFit. Do you think focusing on muscle mass initially was beneficial in the long term? Um, I don't know. I think I have some pretty good genetics as far as muscle mass is concerned. M the rest of my family would argue with you, but the rest of my family's not super active either. I think if they went for it, that they would oh. be. They'd probably put it on easy. What would their argument be? Um, that, that, that we don't have good genetics. Oh, but they just the haven't genetics. tried to tap yeah, that. Anybody with a sporting they... <laughs> background? <laughs> um, not, I, I never played any sports before CrossFit, so in high school I was a cheerleader. Did that count? I've seen a picture of you, I think, in an earlier state, and you look quite different. An earlier state? Earlier state. <laughs> what does that mean? Bad, I mean, I mean <laughs> you looked like uh, just a, a nice, wholesome Utah cheerleader. Oh, you know, what do like, I look like now? Oh, well, uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Down. <laughs> suggest, so now okay, I'm, I'm not trying, wholesome? I practice this with my wife. Let me see what I go through in this episode. Uh, that was not what I was, I was trying to say that you looked like a very not, and you were Good not. Luck. I didn't have a neck tattoo. Let's I'm put out. it that way. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a break real quick. <laughs> He's Come back for Chris's sake. That. Chris can go stay in the corner, cool off. And then uh, in the mouth. I, and then, she's uh, so wholesome. She's so perfectly wholesome with a neck tattoo. When we come, when we come back, we'll talk about uh, the NC Labs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Jason Kalipa, CrossFit Games champion. Jason Kalipa, ladies and gentlemen, the 2008 CrossFit Games champion. Welcome back to Technique Quad. My name is Doug Larson from the Barbell Shrug Podcast. You can find us at barbellshrug.com. Today I want to talk about clean and snatch high pulls. So this is kind of a, a movement that a lot of people aren't very comfortable with. Uh, for some people, it really screws them up, uh, but a lot of people like them. And depending on your particular preference, you know, you, you could be one or the other. So if you happen to be a person that likes it, then this is going to be a great show for you. If you happen to be a person that doesn't like it, there might be a reason you don't like it. Maybe you're not very good at it or you just don't feel like your technique is the same as it is when you do the full movement. Hopefully after watching this, um, you'll be a little bit better at it and maybe you'll start to like these movements. So here's what they look like if you have never seen them before. For a clean, I'm here, exact same technique. Okay. All I'm doing is basically pulling elbows high. For the snatch, again, the exact same thing. I'm here. So bar is popping off upper thigh, just like a normal clean, and right off my hips, just like a normal snatch. 
and I'm guiding the weight straight up, elbows high, just like my elbows should be for the regular movement. So um, one reason we like to do these is because uh, for some people, um, doing this lets them know if they are being pulled forward or if they're being pulled backward by the weight. Some people will go here. Now you saw when I did it, I went straight up and straight down. My feet basically didn't move at all. If you're going heavy, heavier than this, then you, know, you might take a little step back, but you definitely don't want to be pulled forward. You'll see some people will go like this. They'll do their snatch high pull. And they'll pull the weight away from them, either if they hit low or if their hips come up, it'll pull them forward. So, um, you know, you get a lot of feedback on the full movement, but with the high pull also, if you can't come here and pull straight up and straight down, then you also know if you're being, uh, if you're getting off balance, if your technique is skewed in some way where it's pulling you forward. So getting pulled backward isn't as big of a deal, but ideally you come straight up and straight down. Um, the movement's basically the same as a clean or a snatch pull, except usually it's a little bit lighter. That way when I get to here, I go, I go to explode, I shrug, and then with the pull, it's usually heavier, and so the weight kind of floats, and then I drop it on the ground. This is lighter, and so again, I'm just guiding it with my arms. I'm keeping close to my body. I never want to curl the weight. That's another reason that we would do these movements if someone, if someone is chronically, if someone chronically pulls the weights like this, if you're the person that does a curl, especially if you're a person that stops right here, uh, then this is a good movement to help you get that more upright row type position uh, where your hands are staying close to you, elbows are staying above the hands. That way when I go to rack, the bar is here and I'm just rotating around the bar to get into my rack position. So if you're curling, this is a good option for you. That's a very good point. So if you have a, a shoulder injury and you can't do anything overhead for the time being, um, I'm a good example of that. I do a lot of snatch deadlifts, snatch pulls, and snatch high pulls because I don't do a lot of overhead work um, anymore. It just it wreaks havoc on my shoulder. Uh, after I had a shoulder surgery after an MMA fight a couple years ago, I don't do much in the way of overhead squats and jerks anymore. So for me, I can't catch it overhead, but I can go here and I can still get the most athletic part of the movement done, which really is the explosive second pull part of the movement. I can stand in good posture, I can jump, get on my toes, and accelerate the weight, and work on pushing into the ground really, really hard, really, really fast, you know, which helps with, with jumping and running and almost any sport on the planet, on the planet basically. Uh, so I can still get the athletic benefit of snatches without actually catching it overhead. You know, doing overhead squats and whatnot and full snatches has their own set of benefits, and that's great, um, but I can get uh, a big chunk of those benefits by just doing um, the pulls and the deadlifts. As far as common errors go, uh, the common errors are pretty much the exact same um, as they would be on cleans and snatches. You want to always, to give you a, a brief review of good technique on cleans and snatches, you want to always you know, get to a neutral spine, butt down, and I want to start with my butt too high. So I'm here, my butt stays down, I pass my knee, I push my knees under the bar until the bar touches the upper thigh. It never touches any lower than that. And then from here, my arms stay down, I jump, and catch the weight right on my shoulders. I always want to have my elbows nice and high. If I want to open my hands, I can. If I want to close them, I can too, but my elbows should pretty much be right in front of me. Some people get away with being more like right here. That's okay, but I definitely don't want to have it floating off of my chest. I want to have it, kill my microphone, I want to have it right here. Huh? Um, a great demo that we do for that to show that you don't need to be grabbing, to show that you don't need to be grabbing the weight is the, the no hands clean. Uh, this would be a great one for everyone to go practice. I'm not recommending you do this, but it's kind of fun if you want to, is to be here, <coughs> to be here and just pull it up onto your shoulders and catch it. That way you know that you can be right here and not have to really be grabbing the weight. My pinkies are actually off the bar. I'm here, okay? I can front squat in that position, no problem. Okay, so that's especially a good thing if you're a person who, for whatever reason, you don't have a lot of 
external rotation, range of motion, or wrist flexibility. And sometimes you'll lose one hand. There's plenty of people that lose one hand like this. They'll come here, but since I'm throwing it in the right spot, and my elbows are high, it doesn't matter. I can still stand up, get my position back, reset my feet, and I'm ready to go into my jerk. Uh, if you have any more questions about clean or snatch high pulls, you can go to barbellshrug.com, click the ask a question tab at the top of the page, and you can ask us a question there, and we'll maybe we'll do a technique wad on that in the future. And we're back. Hello. NorCal CrossFit. Hello. Hang on, Miranda Oldroyd. Chris Moore redeemed himself over the break. Well I, done. Yeah. We made up. I apologize yep. to Miranda. We'll take a, <laughs> we'll take a, can we take a funny Instagram later, Miranda? I mean, we'll see. Uh, you can post it. I probably won't, but. No, it's fine. I'll just, <laughs> <laughs> I, apo I, I apologize again, though. Feisty on this one is. Mm. Not wholesome. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so, so you guys have started posting uh, with NCCF Labs. The website is NCCFLab.com. Lab. Yeah. Only because NC Lab was taken. So we called the NC Lab. Those sons of bitches. I know. I think it's like an actual legitimate like laboratory. <laughs> like North Carolina laboratory. It is. I yeah. think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so what is it specifically? Yeah. It's uh, like, what it, What are we doing on it? Yeah, what are you doing? Well, uh, Jason and Garrett both did okay at the games this year. Um, yeah, so, so We train also with Pat Barber, who's well known in the CrossFit community. And I work a lot of seminars and I'm out in the community a lot. And we get asked, like at these sessions that you guys do, we hear these stories about these bro sessions every afternoon. What do you guys do? What's your programming? And um, what they want us to tell them is some spreadsheet and some formula, and it's not what we do at all. So I decided, I'm like, hey, you know, if people want to work out with us, they don't live here, they want to be part of the bro sessions, let's post on there what we do. And funny videos of us talking about it and working out and some of the stuff that we say to each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. Let's put it all on there and just let people, if they want to try it, they can try it. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I like about it is uh, I don't think that people understand when they look at Jason, they look at Garrett, I don't think they understand how hard these guys train and how yeah. much volume they do. And when you see it on the website, when you see it on the screen, you're like, what? Okay, I feel this it it makes day. it real for people and it makes it people understand like how hard these athletes are training for sure. Mm -hmm. That's something you build up to over a long period of time too. You don't just like, oh, oh I'm no. going to try to hang with these guys out of nowhere. Yeah. And I remember like specifically, it's only been up for two weeks tomorrow. Um, from the time that we're recording this anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, I remember being like, I wanted to pick a really good workout for the first day to mm -hmm. pe get people to be like, mm -hmm. Whoa, because it's not the programming on there, honestly, and we, we're very clear about it. It's not for everybody. Like if you're not doing all the workouts on CrossFit.com as mm -hmm. prescribed in a relatively like good time, you probably have no business trying to follow what Jason and those guys are coming yeah. up with. Ill advised what we're coming up with. So, but actually um, we've gotten some really cool stuff where people are like, I have no intention of trying to do the whole thing. I'm going to pick one part from each day, <laughs> yeah. scale it down and do it. But I still feel like I'm part of your crew now. And that's, the, nice. that was the goal yeah. for the website. I like that approach. I think a lot of times you'll start like blog programming to like reach the masses and uh, it's they're, they are trying to sell it as something that's for everybody. And, and uh, I, I like that you guys are kind of like approaching it. After talking to Garrett and talking to Jason, it, I, I saw the website for the first time earlier this week. One of my athletes was like, hey, check this out. And I, and I, I liked what I was reading, but I like the approach you guys are taking as far as like it just being fun. Yep. It's not about like this is the best program and, and you need to follow it to a T or it won't work for you or anything like that. It's more like just having a good time so you can see what we're doing and join us. And it's more of a community thing than it really is like a, you know, best program in the world type of thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I started Cro CrossFit, there were there was no such thing as the CrossFit Games. There had been one season of the CrossFit Games, yeah. which was like a barbecue in the backyard. Right. <clears throat> and you just worked out to work out and have fun and hang out with your friends. And now people these athletes are taking it so seriously that they're not having fun anymore. And we just wanted to show that like, hey, number two and number five at the games this year are still working out and they're still having fun. Are they working their asses off? For sure, they're working really hard and it's a lot of volume. But it's not, it's not as complicated as people are trying to make it these days with no. percentages and spreadsheets and all this stuff. And when people are like, well, you know, you guys aren't organized enough, how is this ever gonna work? I mean, like the proof is in the, the pudding. pudding with those two guys, right? Like, the how is it? How can pudding. you say that it's not working, <laughs> too? So, yeah, yeah. 
we just wanted to include more people than can fit in the gym with us at 1.30 in the afternoon. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm one of those guys that likes to try to figure out, you know, do the percentages and try to figure out, you know, exactly how to progress the athlete just perfect and just because i like to nerd out on that kind of stuff i think we all do to a degree but you know one thing we always talk about is how uh it's the program you believe in it's probably gonna be the best program for you and the one that like you're gonna really hit hard uh because i I know some athletes you know they approach a program and they're not really hitting it wholeheartedly and they're just not gonna even if it's the best program written specifically for them if they're not hitting it wholeheartedly it's not gonna be the best program yeah and we talk about that too we're like hey you could do everything and that's why jason we talked about this we're like do we want to share our workouts like now everyone's gonna be doing them or are they gonna beat us and jason was very confident and he's like listen (laughs) he goes i could put my programming up there and i know nobody's gonna hit it the same way that we hit it in here all together yeah um and we put that on there too is it's like hey you can follow these workouts exactly but if you're doing them wrong if you're not hitting them 100 you're still not going to get as Definitely much true. as you can out of the program. So, and and as far as like we know stuff that we don't know about too. So we have a running coach and he's definitely nerds out on running paces and he tells right. us what to do and when it's that time it's specific and we're told what to do by our coach. But for the most part when we're in here we're just making stuff up as we I go. I like that approach. I mean, it's all about balance. Some data, some geeking mm-hmm. out, some details. Obviously awesome mm-hmm. and if you have people to help you it's really cool. But like I said, if you're not having fun, if you're not getting loose and just hitting it and putting your energy where it's supposed to be instead of the spreadsheet you're not going to get the best out of your <laughs> It's not going to fuck the spreadsheet says I should have won the regionals. I don't get it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you lay no. it down, science. Actually, I know some guys that, you know, when you look at their training, you're, you you see the results in training. You're like, this guy is On going paper, to the games. Yeah, but every then year. It doesn't really happen. You know, it won't pan out or, because. Or at the games, you're like, how can this person yeah. not win the CrossFit games by looking at their stats on right. paper? Mm-hmm. And I don't think people lie about their stats. I just think that there's. Not something, everybody anymore. Yeah, no, not everyone. <laughs> so, are you guys selling products or coaching or anything on the side as well? No, I mean, we have some t-shirts so right. far, but that's about it. Um, so you're, you're just doing it for fun for the moment? Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're posting your workouts on there too? Yeah, I mean, we all work out together, so. It's all the same one? Yep, we all work out together. Same wad. All yeah. wadding hard on the same wad. <laughs> okay. So if you're a person that wants to try out the volume that a, that a real top-level games competitor is doing, this is the perfect site. Give it a try. See what you think. We also... Asterix. Uh, <laughs> careful. Be careful, please. We I'm tell sorry. people, don't even... Try to do it by yourself because it's going to suck and it's going to be awful. So you need to find a crew of people that also want to do it. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, I, like all the workouts that we do, I don't want to do that crap by myself, like in the corner of the gym. Mm-hmm. So we encourage people to find a crew and try to recreate the atmosphere. You guys too. posting most uh, multiple wads a day or is it just like usually one big single wad? No. So what we usually do when we get together is from one thirty till roughly three, uh, we do a lot of shit. <laughs> Who's doing the programming? Quantifiably primarily? speaking, it's shit. <laughs> they, how's that for your percentages? It's a lot of shit. Is Jason doing the, most um, of the programming? Or is it? For the most part, Jason's yelling out what he wants to do. Sometimes we'll veto it. Like I know the other day, Jason's like, all right, I'm going to do this with, uh, he was going to do some power cleans, I think. And Garrett and Molly and I were like, we're not doing power cleans. And we're over here like setting up our rings. And Jason's like, what are you guys doing? We're like, we're going to do the whole thing that you just said, but we're going to do it with muscle ups. So. I mean, there's definitely input, but it's mostly Jason. Um, Garrett, uh, a lot of times when Jason's not here, uh, and Molly and I will come up with some stuff together. We'll get stuff from other websites, like we've, you know, read Rich tweeted about something, or, you know, uh, Pat Sherwood sends us a lot of workouts, and he's done a lot of programming, you know, for CrossFit. What was the one I saw just this week with the squatting? Yeah, that was a Rich Froning tweet. What song was that? Uh, Um. Jason can't (laughs) not, I mean, honestly... Rich, if you're listening, if you want to mess with Jason, just tweet something ridiculous that you that you didn't oh, actually right. do, and it's Jason on. will try to do it. It's like a it's like Anchorman <laughs> where the hang on, you have card, to he'll do it. it. <laughs> but right, here's the right. problem: you could you could put something ridiculous, and if he thinks that you did it, he'll somehow be able to do it. Mm. As long as he thinks somebody else did it, Jason can we do it. We need so. to so set this up. Game, right? He's just <laughs> gameness to the extreme. We need to set this up. We need to have a candid camera. And see we if need he'll to try set it. it up in he'll here. He'll try it. We'll have Rich tweet something ridiculous. 
It's something to make Jason look really foolish. <laughs> yeah. We've done it to him before. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. Um, so one time, Jason was late to training, and we were all doing L sits. <laughs> Garrett's over there laughing <laughs> 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 because um, we were doing L sits. We're like waiting for Jason. We're like, hey, hey, let's get out a bunch of gear and let's tell Jason that we were doing weighted L sits when he gets back, and he'll try like it. And he's not going to be able to or do like it. A, like yeah, a jacket. So we got out like no, like on your feet. So we got out like a couple oh, different damn. sizes of med balls, a two and a half plate, a five oh. and a half, a five pound plate, a ten pound plate. And he comes walking in. We're like, and Garrett's like, Jason, you missed it. Miranda <laughs> held an L sit with 25 pounds on her feet for seven seconds. <laughs> and he's like, no, she didn't. He's like, immediately gets on the parallel. <laughs> he's like, okay, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I have it. I think I might still have it on my Did phone. He, do it? he couldn't do the 25. But And the truth of the matter is, we didn't try any weighted L sits at all. Yeah. We just got out Sounds a bunch terrible. of gear. He was able to hold the 10 pound plate. Just mm. because he thought that we could do it, he <sighs> went for it. And of course, That's he's I mean, a lot of places that's how like people progress, you know, it's like, you know, uh, you can't, you can't break the, the five minute mile until someone does it four exactly. minute mile and, and, uh, you know, you can't, uh, no one can squat over a thousand pounds and then you see that dude squat over a thousand pounds. Like, fuck, I guess I can person, do that now. Yeah. yeah. That's all it takes. Yeah, it's common yeah, in powerlifting gyms where guys all squat right around the same weight mm -hmm. until you go to a new gym where everyone squats 100 more pounds more than you, then you can't ratchet up to that next that's, level. That's exactly true. It's why the, the, if you want to get strong quickly, all you do is just recruit or go to a place where there's stronger people. And that's why that's what we have here. And like independent of volume and calculations and all that bullshit, it's like if you don't want to get run out of the room, you fucking lift what they're lifting. It's the most beautiful, simple way to get really strong. Yep, as soon as, I mean, uh, I train, so there's one other girl that trains with us, uh, consistent, I mean, there's a big group of us actually that train together, but one other girl that competed in regionals with me, Molly, um, and as soon as she PRs, I'm like, well, that's it, I have to add 10 pounds to my front squat now, because this is what Molly front squats, and we go back and forth, and I know the boys are the same way, so it's, it's exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The program's like one tiny little component. Oh, yeah. It's all this other shit, it equals the whole pie. <laughs> Just like anything else, I, I think I talked to some other business owners, and they, they, uh, they think they have like a really unique idea for like a bit. They have this business idea. Like no one has ever thought of this. <laughs> this is mine. I'm like, all right. First off, a thousand people thought of that yesterday. <laughs> um, and then it's uh, it's all in the execution. You know, uh, there's a million search engines out there, but for some reason, Google, uh, you know, they had the best execution, and that's why they're the most popular. And that's why we say. Hey, I'm gonna go Google that you now. You can talk about it, but you gotta do, gotta do. I Some probably connected with Whoa. nobody with that analogy. Whoa. I'm trying to get the rhythm going. I'm trying to provoke. <laughs> yeah, a, a, now we're talking a, about Google. I want you guys to battle. We are in San Jose. Man, she'll probably school yeah. my ass on a rap battle. I can't even good, begin to go uh, there. I'm not very good at making it up on the fly. We both honest. have the most boring rap battle. Where we just sit in a corner with fans like, like that is not gonna <laughs> sound good. Hold on, I'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> Let me go Google it. <laughs> cool. well, let's go ahead and wrap this up. We're at, uh, thanks for having us out. We've had a blessed. great time. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Loved hearing about your broken neck. It was yeah. cool. Yeah. We're glad you're still walking. <laughs> Jesus, that, that story made us all queasy as hell. Uh, yeah. Uh, any sponsors you want to mention? Anything you want to promote? I mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, NorCal CrossFit. Obviously, these guys have been my family for the past two years and helped me survive a broken neck. So. NorCal CrossFit for Thank sure, you. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Rogue Fitness, Progenix, uh, Perfect Foods Bar. So we gotta get some of these bars now. Yeah, we gotta go. Buy I think I have tomorrow. one in my bag. If you guys want to try it, I'm sure. Very Let's curious. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, that might be our uh, three meals tomorrow. <laughs> That's <laughs> all we eat. So <laughs> there's a the three of four of I was like, I want abs like these guys. I'm gonna start <laughs> eating. Jason Kleba says, just eat a little chunk of it, <laughs> and then you'll be totally ripped. And then you look like him. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's the name of it again? Perfect Foods Bar. Perfect Foods Bar. All right, cool. Do you guys Thanks. have Whole Foods in Tennessee? We do. All yeah. right, there you go. Only one. Only one in Memphis. They're remodeling it, though. It's going to be are. fancy. Oh, yeah. They say. They, they say, say it'll be jerks. fancy. These I don't believe jerks. them. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was about as good as your <laughs> intro. <laughs> <laughs> Man, son. Guess who's not getting interviewed again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> we just learned that. Bye bye. Again. All right, yeah. Make sure to go to iTunes and uh, give us five stars. Leave positive comments. Thanks, Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That was fun. Thanks, Thank guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Whew. Oh, it is hot in here, huh? Yeah. I'm wearing jeans. Something's out.